Hello, kia ora. I'm Philip Duncan with your April Climate Watch update brought to you by ruralweather.co.nz and recorded on Wednesday, April the 3rd, a couple of days later this week or this month uh, due to Easter weekend. Let's get into it. So on the animated map at the moment, this is the wind map showing air pressure, low pressure down here in the Southern Ocean and Antarctica areas. But further up to the north, all of the bright shading you're seeing here, that is high pressure or higher pressure. And that does sort of push away those rainmakers that we really want to come into our driest parts of the country, which are mostly what I call central New Zealand. So that's the upper South Island, the lower North Island, and the very top of the North Island, Northland, and the far north. Those areas are particularly dry at the moment. Now, it's a little bit hit and miss even within those regions. Some people did get some heavy thunderstorms and downpours in previous weeks and months, and that has helped out. Others have not, and they have uh, had a very dry past several months. So the little bit of good news that I come to bring to you in this video is that El Nino is finally on its way out. This is the El Nino category at the top. This is the La Nina category at the bottom. So this is where we were in spring and summer. And this is where we are right now, coming back into this white zone in the middle, which is neutral. It means our weather system, our climate driver, doesn't lean one way or the other. So in our part of the world, at this time of year, there may not be a great difference between a fading La Nina, sorry, a fading El Nino and going into the middle part of autumn because both of them produce westerly quarter winds for us. And so for those places like Marlborough and Northland, they don't always get the wet weather coming in from those west to southwest directions. But it is not all bad news because as we go into these months ahead, that produces more chaos. Some models are still saying El Nino, others are coming into La Nina. The green line is all of those models put together and you can just see it's basically smack bang in the middle of neutral by the time we get to about spring, we'll see. So let's just take a look at what those models are saying for this month, April. These are the boxes here leaning into that El Nino side but coming out of the official El Nino area. So that means it will be neutral, but sort of leaning more towards El Nino. So we're still officially into that El Nino side of things for this month, but only just. Fast forward a couple of months, you start to see that lean more towards La Nina. Now in our part of the world, that just means a little more chaos coming back into our forecast. So don't overthink that. Don't suddenly think we're in for tons of tropical rainmakers, we're probably not. We're probably going to be into a fairly normal winter weather pattern. And for New Zealand, that can be just all over the place. It can be warm one day, cold the next. It's a little bit spring and autumn-like, sometimes in, even in winter in this country. And then we get through to August and you start to see that lean into the La Nina category, certainly by NOAA, that's out of America. But the Bureau of Meteorology in Australia, they're smack bang in the middle here, not leaning one way or the other as we get to August. So I think there's a bit of uncertainty Quite often, as we saw last year, they can take months longer than you expect because you see one sort of model like that and suddenly people expect that's La Nina. It's not. It's still looking very much like we're in that neutral area, but maybe leaning more towards La Nina as we get towards spring. Okay, let's go back to this month now, break down what is going on with our highs and lows. And we kick off the first week, as I say, a couple of days later due to Easter. Here is that low coming in for this week. We've got a little bit of rain coming in as we get towards the end of the first week. So around that Thursday, Friday mark. It won't be much for the top of the country, but maybe a little bit for the West Coast and maybe the Nelson region as well. Just depends on how much spills over. But look, big high pressure systems coming in behind it. Fast forward to the second week, Monday, April the 8th, the next big high crossing through for the first weekend of April, and by Monday and Tuesday next week, it starts to move out to sea, and the warmer, subtropical, windy northerly comes in behind it. But at the same time, here is an area of low pressure worth keeping an eye on. This one may well move up the country and drive in some rain, some showery activity for later next week. Doesn't always favor places like Marlborough and Northland. Uh, and I know there are other dry regions. Those are the ones that stand out the most based on the complaints and the feedback we get. But I know Horofenua up to Taranaki, uh, around in Nelson, and then various other parts of New Zealand are dry as well. But this is the main area of low pressure later next week or coming in next week. Yes, a possible cyclone here just off the coast of Broome, but it is likely to stay offshore due to all that high pressure just to the south. And we get through to the middle of the month and another area of low pressure kind of dropping down into the New Zealand area, maybe coming out from the west or the subtropics. This far out, it's a little hard to really lock them in. But you can see, again, a lot of high pressure as we come through to the middle part of the month. 
Now, we don't really like putting up weather maps beyond this point. Um, a good analogy, if a plane is flying from New Zealand to Los Angeles and you just change the direction by five degrees, it will land a very long distance away from Los Angeles. These long range models are a bit the same. The further you go out, the more they sort of go off track a wee bit. They're still very good at picking highs and lows, but not always the placement. And in a small country like ours, placement is absolutely everything. So at this point, the vulnerable area is here between this high over New Zealand and the next one south of Perth. Potentially could see some wet weather forming between those two systems, but it's a long way out. For now, high pressure looks like it's in control. So I want to show you now those, those 15 days in animation. So I'm going to click it here, the timestamp's down here, it moves quite fast, but you get the idea of what is going on. That is the front at the weekend, the high pressure zone, and then next week's low pressure system coming into the country, followed by another cold front, another high, and then potentially another weak system out of the Tasman Sea. So that is the next 15 days. I will show it to you once more, and you can keep an eye on it. You can otherwise watch the video on repeat and see this bit over and over to kind of get your bearings because it does move quite fast. But we do that on purpose to show you the chaos, to show you what is happening, and to also show these big highs that are controlling the weather. And for now, they are limiting the amount of rain. But we are seeing more chances of wet weather coming in. So it's not as settled for as long. But when the rain does come in, those totals just may not be exactly what you want. So let's drill down deeper into the rainfall. This is the first, or sorry, the next seven days from April 3rd through till the 10th of April, the departure from normal. And how, in other words, how much wetter or drier is it compared to this time of year usually over the past sort of 20, 30 years? You can see New Zealand does lean drier than average. We're still in this 75, 50, 20% usual rainfall. Not the same story in parts of Queensland and New South Wales and the ACT. They're leaning 300, 400, maybe even... 600% above average in some areas. That's the rain we want in New Zealand. It is not far away from us. It's coming in, but it's coming into the West Coast where, let's be honest, that's um, just another day in the office. So let's have a look at 15 days worth of rainfall. In the white boxes are the heavier amounts and the black boxes, the driest. So no rain here. Limited rainfall along the eastern and central parts of the country. We've left the top of the South Island into that kind of more normal category because there just might be enough to spill over. But if you are in Marlborough and you do need that rain or in Nelson or Horofenua or Wellington or Wairarapa or Taranaki, you're still on the borderline of getting it. So you can see here that rain shadow effect in the North Island as those systems come on through. Plenty of rain in the tropics, but still high pressure up here. Zooming in, same map, but closer version for New Zealand. This is the side where it is driest in these greens and blues. That's where you're sort of 1, 5, 10, 15 millimetres over 15 days. Not a huge amount. 100 millimetres possibly here in the Nelson Ranges and nearby. That could spill over into Takaka and Golden Bay and into Nelson itself. We're forecasting 50 millimetres for Nelson and about 30 for Marlborough. That is based on that low next week. Uh, as we go towards sort of, you know, the 12th of April in that period or uh, 10th to 12th to 13th around then. That's where most of this rain is coming from. It's out of Australia. It's also out of a new low coming in. So that's why you're seeing 200 millimetres plus for the West Coast. And in the North, not huge amounts either. You're in that kind of 20 to 50 millimetre mark, hit and miss. And it doesn't take much for this dry area here to maybe slide further up or down. So it's a messy map, but it does still show us some signs of a silver lining if you're looking for some wet weather. Soil moisture maps, as we've said, the far north and northland looking very dry. So too Great Barrier Island, Coromandel Peninsula, and then sort of through Bay of Plenty into Hawke's Bay, although we're not getting many complaints in this area, just sort of wouldn't mind a bit of rain, but not really too problematic. We're certainly hearing more concern down here. Now there are issues with this Niwa made map. Uh, there have been complaints about this in other media outlets recently, because for Marlborough, it doesn't seem to reflect how dry it is. If you notice the way Niwa uh, makes the maps all sort of curvy and smooth. That's a sign that the computers are, are guessing a lot of the, the data in between some of the points. So this is not the most accurate, it's just a rough guide. Um, and because the New Zealand government doesn't have open data, that means we can't improve on it. So it's just stuck the way NIWA makes it. So that's the reason why some of you may not be getting what you think is a fair representation of your area 
Let's get into the marine areas and then we'll finish on temperatures. Marine wise, as uh, the Moana Project, great website, please check it out if you want more information. Uh, you can see the only part is here around Wairarapa, Upper, Hawke's Bay, and Manawatu. I'm always surprised Manawatu goes from west coast to east coast. I don't think every New Zealander knows that. Um, so a little bit warmer than average here. It's also a little bit warmer than average up around the Bay of Islands, Coromandel, but you're not into that marine heat wave category, but it is still a little bit milder. Temperature wise, this is the actual temperature map. This is the area where it's quite mild still, 20, 22 degrees. If you want to jump in the sea and go for a swim, that's not too bad. Uh, might be warmer than the air temperature. So, you know, that's, that's not a bad way to you could wake up and go for a swim. A lot of you do. Uh, further down the country, you may not want to because around Otago Peninsula, you're getting into that 13, 12 degree mark. So certainly warmest at the top of New Zealand. That is pretty much all from me. Just lastly, temperatures, generally speaking, we've seen, I think, a lack of frosts so far this autumn. Now that might still change, get those big highs rolling in and you certainly get some cold starts. But because our weather is still El Nino-esque and because it is still the start to middle part of autumn, expect a lot of sideways weather, and that produces westerlies, and whether it's a nor'wester or a sou'wester, they're not as cold as those southerlies and southeasterlies can be. So for now, that does keep our temperatures up a little bit. So your daytime temperatures may not always be flash, but your overnight lows may be up above average by a few degrees. And so overall, at the end of the month of April, we do expect this month to be leaning, you guessed it, a little bit warmer than average. That is all from me. Thanks very much for joining us. We'll see you again in one month with our next Climate Watch Update.